G'day. You might have um, found your laptops getting slower and slower and you've decided to install Linux on it to see what that does and you find that it keeps crashing. So your Windows applications are all running really dog slow and the Linux keeps crashing and you think, oh well I've got to throw away my laptop because I just, it doesn't work. Or oh, you might think that something's wrong with Linux or you might think that, um, I don't know, something's ruined and you must buy a new computer. Well. It's probably not true and every time I've uh, been confronted by this problem and it's been directly about a dozen times and through forums and on Facebook and that sort of guff, uh, I guess probably another dozen interactions with people that have had the same problem. So the Windows is running really slow so they put Linux on it and find that it crashes and is unreliable. Well I'm going to show you the hardware and the software differences and show you what to do to fix the problem. And I'll also demonstrate with a laptop, an ancient laptop that I've got, I'll get it to work its heart out and show you exactly what kind of workloads upset the computers and what you can do about it. Uh, the good news is you'll end up with a computer that performs more, uh, well, performs much faster and also it'll make it reliable. Not only that, it'll help its lifespan. So this is a worthwhile video to watch from one end to the other. Well, I guess that's it. Let's get into it. I'll show you the hardware. Let's move into that now. Okay, so let's have a look at a laptop. Basically, everyone's familiar with the, the top side of it. You have a screen, of course, and your keyboard. And what happens uh, is you tend to operate on this side of the laptop and don't really think about what's happening on the other side. Now, somewhere in all of that, there's got to be a CPU that works hard. And if you have a, a PC, you know, uh, and it, you get it working hard, you notice that a fan runs, and you probably hear your laptop fan running a lot if you're having this crashing problem. Now there's a bit of a hint anyway as to what the problem might be. Now in laptops there's usually, well, I have to look on this one, there's a, usually a fairly small um, vent somewhere around the machine which you'll notice hot air coming out of. And if that air is not flowing very well, you can, you can start um, getting an understanding as to where the problem might lie. Um, basically, in every case where I've had this problem, the laptop simply was overheating when running Linux. Now why wasn't it doing that on Windows? Um, well on Windows you'll notice the hard drive flickers a lot more. You see the little light go flicky flicky flick pretty much continuously. You know every second or two there's, there's something going on in the hard drive. On Linux it hardly ever uses the hard drive. Um, unless your RAM's really full and it has to use swap space. Uh, in a previous video that I've done ages ago where I've had an OS comparison for the three operating systems, there's the clue. Um, Linux runs very light on RAM and it doesn't use swap space until it really kind of has to. Um, whereas Windows tends to be using swap space all the time and Linux has a separate partition for the swap space. Now I know this might sound boring to you but it's an explanation for what's going on. Now swap space is used for uh, when RAM is busy, that's the active memory, kind of like, you know, in your own brain, I'm trying to put this to people that are less computer literate. Uh, you've got this, the CPU, which is actually a, a chip on board inside that does all the crunching, actual calculation and computing work. Then you have RAM, which is access, a random access memory. Now, random access memory is the quick memory, rather like the memory in our head kind of thing. Now, the long-term storage is what we put on a hard drive. It's hard drives are really designed for and really only well suited for more permanent storage. But to alleviate the problem of a shortage of RAM when, it, when the computer is doing work, all the operating systems have a method for handling what's called swap space. We would swap a big block of RAM, that's active memory, to the hard drive temporarily so it can go off and do some other work using that RAM for other purposes. Now on Windows it is stored as a file on the same partition as all your other um, information. Now you might know that partition on a hard drive as C drive. Um, with the new Windows installations with UEFI, which is a very fast way of booting, um, you'll notice your Windows pretty much produces like three or four partitions. Now one or two of those partitions you won't normally be able to get access to, but the one you always will be able to get access to is drive C. And that's simply a partition on the hard drive. Okay, now Linux has the same sort of partitioning arrangement and has 
had made uh, more use of it in the past than what uh, Windows has. Now Windows um, installation is becoming more and more like the Linux installation where you have different partitions for different jobs. But one leftover of the way they have done it in the past is that swap space is stored on the hard drive. On Linux you have it as a separate partition. right? And that's where the information can be taken in and out of RAM in big blocks. On Windows it's written as any other file and if you're familiar with the hard drive getting fragmented you might have had to run defrag on your uh, C drive. Well that defrag um, is a program designed to undo the mess of fragmented files. Linux tends not to create fragmentation unless it's a really really high workload. So a regular desktop user would never have to um, defragment their hard drive in normal use. It's only really high demand servers where there's huge amounts of data going in and out, lots, and co lots of calls left, right and centre. But as a desktop user you'll never really create a fragmented drive. Um, whereas on Windows it's very common to have a fragmented drive and part of the cause is in fact that swap space. But know that it's scattered around the hard drive and it's actually part of the problem of fragmenting your drive. So it is in two ways responsible for Windows slowing down. One for fragmenting the drive and the other it actually gets used too much. On Linux, let's boot this little guy up. Uh, now this is my ancient computer, that was a very quick turn on. <laughs> this is my ancient computer and this is very quick for a startup. In a previous video I've um, put uh, this system on. It's basically running a Linux distribution designed to look a lot like Windows. Um, but that's not important for us right now. Where am I? Mouse. Okay, so system monitor is what I'm after. There we go. Okay, so we'll have a look at how the, the system loads working. That should be fairly clear, I hope. Okay, so you can see here, this is the system monitor. I've only just been running it for about a minute now. So you can see here, this is how full the RAM is. Now this machine's only got two gigabytes of RAM, but even with a full desktop running, it's only using, oh, what's it, about 25% of the RAM. It's not using swap space at all. There's no swap usage at all. In a Windows installation, you'll see some swap usage. Now you'll know uh, Windows, uh, that's right, it's called virtual memory on uh, Windows. Everyone else in the world calls it swap space. Um, both valid names, just a different way of looking at it. Okay, so you can see, even though this has got it running a full desktop, we're using very little RAM and we're using zero swap space. As a result, there's no hard drive activity. And so that means when you're doing a job that Linux is capable of running the CPU flat out because the hard drive is not slowing it down. Now here we're getting to the center point of the problem. Uh, Linux can actually run faster and demand more off the CPU, which means if you're rendering a video, it happens, let's say, twice as fast. And that's the, the, every time I've tested it, I've got you know, not quite twice as fast video processing um, out of the machine because of that um, the fact that it works in RAM more and can run the CPU better. But as a result, if the CPU is not being cooled properly, it overheats, and that is the cause for the crash. So understanding that the efficiency is what's causing the crash because the machine is physically probably full of dust. Now, let's open the machine up, and I'll show you what we're looking for. OK, you can see I've, I've got this partially dismantled. The keyboard is in my hand. I'll put it aside. Uh, oops. Okay, so we've got we have RAM in here. Here you can see the actual CPU underneath my screwdriver here, and there's this piece of copper which goes over to a heatsink on the side. I'll just remove this part. Tricky. 
I've had this thing open that many times for various reasons over the years. Okay, so. See that a little better now. Zoom in. Okay, so I've opened it up a fair bit. Now you can see I'm, I'm working my way into the machine. Any screws still left to go? No. So they've all got their own way of being assembled. As you can see in here, we've got the actual processor, the main processor, and in the back you've also got the video processor. So we've got uh, the CPU and then the graphics. And they've got these copper lines running around to heat sinks over here. And here is the actual fan which blows air through. The um, heat, well it's kind of a heat exchange unit I guess of sorts. It's a bit like a car radiator. And instead of having water going to and fro, you've got this copper conducting the heat away from the CPU. Now it's important that if you do end up taking this apart, make sure when you put it back together again, that this part makes good thermal contact with the CPU because otherwise the thing will overheat again and again anyway. You may need to get some thermal paste. I do not want to open this up to actually uh, disturb the thermal paste. But these parts here end up being clogged with dust. Now this one's pretty good. There's a small amount of dust starting to build up on the fan. Let's see how much more I can zoom in. You can see there's a small amount of dust here on the fan. You can see we zoomed in pretty fine. This, you know, of course you can scale it relative to my finger. There's a little bit of dust built up. Now I actually use compressed air. I'm quite brutal as far as this is concerned with cleaning out the dust because I find it really removes it. But the first thing I do is vacuum it out. And when you consider this thing being knocking around a dusty workshop, it's actually pretty clean. The funny thing is uh, most people don't realise when they're using their laptop, they sit it on their lap or they might sit it on the table or they might sit it on the bed or something like that. Either way, it, it's all prone to picking up dust off the surface it's sitting on. A PC has got much more distance between the fan intake and, you know, the grills. Um, so the, the likelihood of it picking up things off the floor is much more reduced. But if your PC is sitting on the floor and it's a carpeted floor, that's a particularly bad source of dust. Now, I tend to clean out my computers every so and so often when I start noticing dust on the outside of them. I open them up and blow out, the, we're using compressed air the insides. Now if you're using compressed air, a bit of sense is uh, worthwhile employing because uh, compressed air does generate a lot of force. So do take care of using compressed air. Um, the main thing that I find with using compressed air is not to over -air the fans. I have not damaged a machine yet using compressed air. So it's possible I might do it in the future, but I have not yet. It's also possible you can damage the computers with a vacuum cleaner, particularly a metal end. So, um, you know, Always use some care, but here's your culprit. This is where the problem likely is. I don't want to pull this part, pull this apart right now because it's a big job to put it back together again. Well, hopefully I've assembled it correctly. Uh, spin them up. Power cord. Okay. Got to open. Uh, Got to install a video editor. I'll just. So we've got open shot available on this system. This is a 32-bit system, so I'm not sure what it'll be available on. I do have an open shot available. Not in your way, no, okay. So I'll mark for installation. It's got to install a fair bit of stuff, so see how we go. Yep, it's downloading. So I have to let that download and install those programs.
And basically all I'm doing now is a crash test to see whether it'll edit videos. So it'd be quite interesting, interesting to see. This is a 32-bit, 1.6 gigahertz, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 16 years old. So it's a very, very tall order for this old girl. Um. So what's up to? Done. Okay. So that's downloaded and installed a video editing package. Wait for it to catch up. Any time. Done. Right. So I'm going to have to stop the camera and grab the SD card out of it. Back in a second. Okay, the moment of truth, I've swapped out the SD cards. There we go. Interesting to see if it'll play. A BLC might play. <laughs> Wowie. Okay, copy them to the hard drive. Well, um, I had a bit of trouble with the USB card readers not being reliable. I had to go to an older card reader that I have. That I knew was USB 2. This is the old guy. It seems to be working a lot better than the other did. So, there is a bit of hardware compatibility issues with uh, the older girl. So far, so good. I've had to go the hard way just to see how everything's working behind the scenes. Seems to be copying beautifully now that I've got the right piece of hardware for the job. Okay. Okay, so I'll leave the system monitor there and run the video editor, if I can do that, multimedia. What's that doing to it? Okay, with the video editor opened, we've got about, oh, about 40% of the RAM used, so let's just add some files to this thing. Actually, I might even save it as something first, take project as.
the next fractions. Okay. That's tormenting this old machine. The real reason why I'm doing this tormenting job is because this job is way beyond what the machine is really designed for. And I want to show you um, how light the machine is on the swap space. And if you can listen carefully, and I'll shut up for a second so you can hear the fan running. Hopefully you can hear that. Okay, so the machine's working its heart out right now. There we go. I'm not even sure whether this will actually happen, so let's find out in a second. You can see it's really struggling. You can see how hard that machine is working. And that is I might just pause that. Right. So even so, you can see we're not using swap space. As hard as this machine is working, it's working its absolute hardest. Um, so. You can see the hard drive load is basically non-existent, even though it's doing a really tough job for this machine. So this is the opportunity for overheating your computer, and this is the reason why uh, Linux would potentially crash on your machine if that fan is blocked. If it can't cool that CPU, it'll simply overheat. And this thing's really being belted very hard, and as you can see, it's still running and has not crashed, but it's working its heart out. Now Windows, instead of... Um, tormenting the CPU torments your hard drive. And as you can see, even with this workload, the hard drive's not bothered on the Linux machine. Um, yep, there is zero hard drive activity. Uh, let me just zoom down on that. It's working as hard out, but there's no hard drive activity. It's all happening in RAM. So it's quite interesting how little Linux uses the hard drive. Right there. And it's still working its heart out, doing that job. Now let's just maybe um, move to here. Add another video. Like that. That'll be a really tough job for it to restart. I'm expecting it to go into swap space, but so far it hasn't. Might move that aside a little bit. Okay, so I'm absolutely tormenting this computer and we are still not bothering the hard drive. So that there is the fundamental difference between the systems causing grief on the on the, the CPU okay. usage. I'll just stop that. All right. Well, I guess that's it. So the performance problem you're having in Windows causing an excessive amount of wear and tear on the hard drive means that by accident you get around the problem of uh, a clogged fan. Um, and on Linux, because everything runs so quickly, you're able to work your CPU to, a, to its capacity and with a poor cooling system that obviously you can't keep going. So. It's a very easy fix. I hope that helps you. Um, yeah, feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. Bye for now.